Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So what we're going to be doing is looking at mail merge from the paper four information technology course. And we're doing October, November 2023 paper. So mail merge is the second task of this paper. So the task is split into three parts. One is going to be completing spreadsheets. The next part will be completed in databases. And the third part will be completed in mail merge, so Word. Okay, so we're going to be using this RTF uh, document. So let's just separate these colors. So any mail merge tasks will highlight in green. Database tasks we can do in another color. And we'll just stick to this task for the spreadsheets. So what we're going to have is a workbook that contains customers and orders for fast food delivery service. And in this workbook here, we have three worksheets. Okay, so let me just change the color. So what we need to do first of all is examine the worksheets. The first one is going to be customers, which contains all customers have ever used the service and shows which customers have an account. So that's really important, we'll just highlight that part. That enables them to pay their bill at the end of the month. So the mail merge is going to include the customers who have an account, their bill, okay? And the bill may include only the value for um, April, or the bill may include the totals for March and April combined in the total. So we'll have to use some conditions um, to get this done. So that's the customer's worksheets. Let me just have a look at the first worksheet. So this is customers, you've got ID, title, phone name, middle initial and so on and address details this field it looks blank but this is key it tells you if they are an account holder and we're only going to be sending the letter to the account holders so they need to have an account so let me highlight this here go to sort and we want to sort by a particular field, so my data was headers, account holder, and do Z to A. So that should make the Ys appear at the top, and we don't need to include the other records. You can get rid of these. Done. Next thing, April order. So April orders worksheet lists all the orders placed by the account holders in April. So one account holder may have made more than one order. So you can see this person here is Amelia Carr. I saw before, um, A Carr. She has placed three orders. And obviously when you add up the amount, it's going to be over 200 something. Okay, that's done. We don't need to change anything here. For this one here, first quarter accounts, this lists the account holder payments for January to March. And if you look at the key, green is when you paid all the way, you paid for January, February, March, red is unpaid. So we're going to have to work out if they've paid for March and April. Okay, so it's only, oh, sorry, let me say that again. We're going to have to use a condition to work out if they're going to be paying for both March and April. So in this instance, uh, this person here will be paying for March and then the April orders as well. Okay, I think it's this person there. If it's all green, it means they're only going to be paying for the April value. So what I'm going to do is just include an extra field called MAR paid. Uh, y is going to symbolize yes, they have paid. And N is going to be for no, they haven't paid. these the reason i don't need this key anymore because we're going to be inserting these uh, as tables in a, a database software in a moment so we don't need these rows at the top okay and let's save this this excel document just include the center number candidate number save we don't need to have this open anymore now we're going to use a database to generate a list of recipients. So the recipients um, 
or the, the actual data that we need for the mail merge, we'll have to look at the mail merge documents in a moment. But let's open up a new database. Okay, I'm just going to create a new database file, enter the name. 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. Enable content. Right, let's import all three of the sheets. So Excel, since it's not CSV, it's a workbook, uh, desktop. Um, whoops, let me go to... Um, 2023, November 2023, from here. Let's get the customers table in first. The first row contains headings. And each customer has a unique ID, so we can just select, choose my own primary key, customer ID, next and finish. Uh, let's do the next thing. Um, same file, April orders. So you can see these primary keys are going to be repeating. So and we're not going to set that in a moment. So first row contains headings. No primary key is needed in this instance. Okay, create, I'll say home, oh, external data, Excel. And first quarter. And we can choose the primary key because each customer is going to have a unique, uh, each record is unique for each customer and finish. Right, what we need to do for the April orders is we need to total up the amount each person's ordered um, in the month of April. So we can create a summary query. So we can go to Query Wizard. We can add customer ID and for each customer ID we want the total. Next. Go to summary, summary options, go to sum. And what that will do is add up all of the values um, for each customer ID from the month of April. Finish. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make this into one word. So sum April owed. Done. Save. And the next part before we can make a query, which will include all of the details that we need for the mail merge, is we need to make the relationship. So we go to database tools, relationships, um, customers. We don't need April orders because now we have the sum of April orders. So we can drag that table in. So the customer ID would be linked to the customer ID in this table. And the same here. Okay, let's make the query. So I will use query design. Add the tables again, customers, first quarter and queries. And at this point now we need to look at a mail merge document and see which fields we need. So we need title, forename, surname, all of the address details. And the next piece of information is ID. And then we need the details for the March amount, the April amount, and then make a new field for total. So March sum, April sum. And I'm going to also include March paid because this is going to be forming a condition for this part in the mail merge. And you'll see that later. So if it's equal to N, then we have to add, add the March. And yeah, so this, yeah, so the true part of this statement will be if this cell here is equal to N. And you'll see that later on. So, right. So what we have is all of the fields that we need for the mail merge. And we have the total for March, total for sum, uh, sorry, for April. And what we need to do now is a condition. If they haven't paid for March, then they need to pay for both March and April. So we need to include that formula that will work out the total bill. So what we do is go to design view. I'm going to click here at the end, go to builder. 
type the name of the new field, so total uh, bill, colon, and an I if, open the brackets. And what we want to say, if this here is equals to n, if it's true, then we want to add the total for March and April together. So M A R sum plus sum and if it's not true we just want to return the value for April only so they don't have to pay um, for March so that's the logical test there true and then the false part close the bracket uh, press OK and when you'll notice when we come out there the fields have square brackets around them let's go to run and you can see when it's n we're adding the two values together when it's y we're just taking the April amount so when it's n 63 plus 54 is 117 when it's just y we only take the value from April it was showed here let's save this as merge done file save okay what you need to do now is let's close this down let's close this down and let's make the mail merge now so we've done all of these uh, we know which fields that we need to merge in okay so let's go to the mail merge and start the mail merge wizard so step by step next select recipients browse Go to desktop. You want to select the merge query. That's okay. And you see this is all of the information from the query that we just created, including the total bill and this field here and the totals, totals for March and April. Right. What I'm going to do first of all is let's do the date. So it's going to be in this format here. And I'm going to use quick parts. So I'm going to go to uh, date, just put a format in there, press OK. Okay, that's fine. Now let's insert the title for name and surname. So title space for name space surname. Let's put the address in now. Okay, just put the space back in there. Insert the for name here. Then insert the customer account number here, the ID. And this information here, guys, is on your exam paper. So what I'm going to do is I am going to delete this now. Okay. Let me just see. Oops. So follow these rules to display the conditional text that's just grabbed in the question paper. A letter to customers who have not paid their March bill should include the following. So it's pretty much the same as what's there. So I don't need to keep this. Just click there and just press enter. And what I'm going to do is click on rules, if then else. So if MAR paid is equals to N, so this means if they haven't paid, so letters to customers who have not paid their March bill should include the following text. Okay, copy that. So that's if it's true. And if it's not true, letters to customers who have paid their March bill should include the following text. Press OK and finish. Now what we need to do is go to File uh more options go to advance 
And finally, option that says toggle field codes, so show field codes instead of their values. Okay, and then, then you can see the actual um, formula here. So if this is equal to N, your March account bill will be, and here now we can insert. Okay, the March one. So insert March sum remains unpaid. Your April account stands at some April owed. Your total bill is okay. So you'll notice that's the logical test finishes here. That's the true statement. The speech mark is here and it ends here for the true statement. The false part starts from here and ends there. So if it's false, then we need to just put the April amount in only. Okay, done. And then you can turn this off. So if you go to uh, more options, advanced, show field codes, turn it off. And if you go forwards, you can see this person um, so let's go to preview, Mr. Logan Watkins, L Watt. So what I'm going to do is just open up this sheet now. Let's have a quick look. So he's paid. So he only owes, um, L Watt. Sixty four from April. Yep, and that's what we have. But then this person, um, B H A R, she's not, or they haven't paid. So who's B H A R? Oh, I can't see, uh, but they haven't paid, so. B H A R. There you go. So Bethany. Okay, so she hasn't paid, so that will be added to her April amount as well. So yeah, this one here. Right, so that's the mail merge part done, and you can flick through. The last few parts of this is just to filter. Okay, so you can save your data. Uh, the last part is to filter. Every time you filter, you got to save it as something else. Merge. Mail merge le the letters to only those customers who have not paid a March bill. So to filter, you go to edit recipient list. So these are all of the people, everyone selected. So you go to filter. Uh, you go to MAR underscore paid. If it's equal to who are not paid, so N, then the letters will only go to these people here. And then you save. But if you want to do the next one, uh, merge the letters to those customers whose total. So let me say that again. Mail merge the letters for only those customers whose total April bill is more than three hundred. So, what we need to do is they have paid. And their April bill is more than three hundred. Yeah, there you go, job done. So all of these are more than 300 and they have paid. And then you can save that as something else. Okay guys, thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Hopefully it was useful. Take care, thank you, bye bye.